Hi, and welcome to our next episode of the Nature of Hex Prologue Basic Programming Stuff Vlog Tutorial. Yay! <laughs> okay, so, um, at the end of our last episode, I said I was going to talk about uh, sort of logic and loops. But um, I think I'll be just focusing on the logic part. So if statements, as you can see right here. And um, actually, I just finished recording this episode, but I uh, changed some, some of my monitor settings and all that stuff, so the um, recording wasn't uh, very good. Um, actually, it was just in this like top corner of the recording so that that kind of sucked <laughs> so let's make it again and actually I think it's probably best because I rambled a little too much <laughs> um, in the last uh, recording so let's let's get to it I'm rambling right now it's what I do so yes let's talk first talk about um, logical comparisons and uh, uh, what those are so um, let's say we have two variables uh, we have a variable called a number. It's going to be an integer, and it's going to equal seven. Okay, and another variable we'll called b number, and it's going to be an integer. Ooh, not multiply, and it's also it's going to equal three, right? So, um, what can we do to compare these numbers? For example. How do we know that a three isn't a seven? I mean, it seems pretty basic to us, but you gotta tell computers these things. So what we'll do is use comparison operators. Um, so just in this comment here, I'll list out the the basic ones. Um, so we have equals, uh, which is two equal signs. So different from this equal sign, which is the assignment operator, meaning it's going to assign this value of seven to the variable before it. And then uh, we have greater than, less than, and then uh, greater than equal to, less than or equal to, and then the not operator, which uh, essentially will just flip the answer that we get back from true or false. And if you remember, um, we talked about uh, Booleans before, true and false. So Basically, what these will do is, when we added things like 7 plus 3, it evaluated and would give us 10, right? But with these operators, instead of giving us a number back, it'll look at it and see whether it is true or false. So, um, let's say we have our boolean of type bool. Um, if you remember, and then, you know, that could be true or false plays <laughs> false something like that but actually we don't need to store that into uh, a variable because what you can do is you can just drop it right in here so a number is equal to b number so 7 is equal to 3 if I were to make that statement you would say what you would say Chris you are an idiot and that is false right because, you know, that's, that's false. Yes, it is true that it is false, <laughs> right? <laughs> so that's why you would say that. Um, or if I want to say uh, a number is greater than b number and 7 is greater than 3, you would say, okay, yeah, that sounds right. That's true, right, right? And... Um, uh, it's greater than or equal to, and of course you would say that is um, true. <laughs> 7 is greater than or equal to 3, because it is greater than, and but not equal to. But there's an or in there, <laughs> which we will talk about in a second. Okay, so um, let's also look at this not, right? Um, so I think uh, sometimes you can, um, as I had before, maybe I should have kept that variable boolean is a bool, whoops, 
and it's equal to true. <laughs> My God, I can't spell today. It's equal to true, right? So if we put you know our boolean in there, and we you know hit run, it'll say true because that's the value. But if we stick this exclamation point at the beginning and run it, what will it say? It'll say false. So essentially this exclamation point will flip the logic, um, which is useful from time to time. And especially with more advanced things. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll just leave it at that for now. So um, next, let's talk about if if statements. So it goes like this, if, and then some parentheses, and then a block of code after that. And a block of code is just these uh, uh, sets of curly braces. So essentially everything is inside a block. And uh, this is important to keep in mind so that you don't get jumbled up where you are in your code. And be sure to always keep your stuff properly tabbed and with good white space so it's easier for yourself and other people to read in the future. Um, I've looked back at some older code of mine from when I was first playing around and things were just all over the place and I had no idea what was going on even though it was really simple programs and stuff so uh, just a side note, uh, keep your code clean. <laughs> so. Uh, yes, if statements. <laughs> um, so yes, we have if, and then we'll put uh, some manner of true or false in here. Uh, and then it'll run whatever code is inside here. So um, let's say if a number is less than, uh, we'll, we'll put 5, less than 5, right? And then we'll trace... Uh, it's less than 5. So right now, a number equals uh, 7. So when we run this, what will happen? A, 7 is less than 5, so that's false. So then what happens? Nothing happens. It just skips right over it. It doesn't even really think about it. Uh, think about it because like that's false I don't need to worry about this code on the inside but if we put uh, B number in here B number and run it B number is 3 which is less than 5 it'll say it's less than 5 hey woohoo <laughs> and it'll run the code on the inside but um, let's say we do want it to do something if that ends up being false but we will put after this code block We'll put else and then another code block. So now if this first part ends up evaluating as false, it will run this second thing. So we'll just trace, whoops, not abstract. Uh, I'm in a bit of a rush. I have an appointment later today, so I'm a little scatterbrained. But anyways, <laughs> uh, it's not less than five dot dot dot. So, so disappointed. So, if we put um, a number back in here, which is 7, and run it, what does it tell us? It's not less than 5. Boo hoo. Boo, 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 hoo, hoo. <laughs> okay, so yes. So, if it is less than 5, we'll say it's less than 5. But if it's not less than 5, it will simply just go on its a way to do the other half and say it's not less than five. But what if we we're particularly interested to see when it is not less than five? We want to know, is it a seven? So what we can do here is use an else if. And this will be an entirely separate uh, bit of, whoops. So uh, yeah, let's just clear that out for now. Or actually, let's not clear it out because we are going to still use that. So um, <laughs> let's cut this, right? We'll cut it. We have our else if block here. 
So we know that's there. And then let's put a final else here. And then in there, we'll put this. OK? Which is why you need to keep your block codes clean, or else you wouldn't know what, what goes where. <laughs> so OK, so we'll, with this else if, that means we can have a second condition to check. So in this case, we say, is a number less than 5? If it is, it'll say it's less than 5. But if not, it'll continue on. So now we're working with numbers that are not less than 5. So this will be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and up. And, uh, and that's another thing to keep in mind. Uh, 5 is not less than 5, <laughs> because it is equal to 5. So let's say uh, a number is equal to 7, we'll trace it's a ma fa 7. That's, you know, I guess its favorite number or, or something like that. <laughs> so uh, let's run it now and see what it does. It's a muffa seven, <laughs> as they say. So, uh, one thing you need to keep in mind is uh, if you have sort of this sort of catch-all thing, which is like sort of the bigger scale of things, you want to be sure that's at the end because um, it'll kind of drop through, and if it is kind of caught by one of these uh, intermediate if uh, things, it will just stop there and it'll exit the entire if. Thing. And um, the entire if statement, I should say, it's to be more specific. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, be sure to keep that in mind uh, when doing your if statements. Once it evaluates to something final, it will exit out of the entire thing. So yeah, if we were to change it to uh, 435 and run it, it will say it's not less than 5. Okay, so I think that will be it um, for if statements. Um, yeah, so I said that we would talk about loops, but actually let's talk about that in the next video because that's a whole another can of worms, <laughs> but very useful worms. And uh, I also want to sort of wrap in the arrays that we talked about earlier with with loops, because I think that's the most useful place to use loops is when working with arrays. So, yeah, I think that's everything. Um, I kind of wanted to talk about and, whoops, and and or with these uh, evaluation things, but uh, you can either look that up yourself or <laughs> <laughs> or wait for a later episode. Um, or leave a comment down below and say, hey, yeah, what is that exactly? But uh, for now, it's not so important. But essentially, you can double up these uh, if it's less than 5 uh, or um, greater than uh, something else. You can see if that evaluates is true or false and whatnot. But okay, yes, that's it. Let's go on to the next episode. We're going to talk about loops. It's going to be awesome, I hope. <laughs> and I will try to minimize rambling, but uh, I was supposed to do that now, and where are we? We're like uh, almost 15 minutes in. <laughs> so uh, fancy that. All right, so I will see you next time when we talk about loops. <laughs>